The following is a Joel Mahalik production. Live from the Network Operations Center of QYB Radio Network, welcome to Tech Talk, the show where we turn geek speak into everyday language. Have a question? Call us. Our number is 443-836-0171. Now, without further translation, here is your host of Tech Talk, Chief Linguist Joel Mahalik. Thank you and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Tech Talk Live. I am Joel Mahalik, as the lady there said. Welcome aboard to the show where we talk tech and try to have fun with it. And I am joined by my broadcast partner, Mr. Ron. Ron, good evening. Good evening, Joel. It's nice to hear your lovely voice again, and hello, it's everyone nice to, out there. Thank you. It's nice to hear my voice again. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to hear my voice again. But no, it is good to see you. Uh, hopefully, things are going uh, better for you. Yeah, you know, I'm things are good. getting closer to being very good, yes. I'm very, very good. And, uh, you know, congratulations on the Cubs doing very well. Oh, well, thank you, yes. Yes, you know the interesting. The, 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 if I'm if I if I could, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut yeah, you off. No. The, the the thing I'm looking at from the interesting perspective. I mean, of course, my team's out of it, but I want the Cubs to win everything <laughs> because of Back to the Future too. You're not the first. <laughs> That's so that I really want to see them just win everything for that reason alone. No other reason. No other interest that I have. So. Yes, they've picked up a lot of fans for whatever reason, and I don't mind, you know. Yeah, you're right, there's probably various reasons, but you yes. know, it could a lot of it could just be bandwagoning, who knows. But uh, it's a pleasure to have you here, Ron, on the program. Uh, tonight, a little uh, change-up in a few moments. We'll be joined uh, by our guest, Patrick Talley, and he's got an interest in app. Uh, that he wants to talk about, and uh, boy, I'll give him the platform to talk about it because it is a great app. So uh, uh, that's coming right up. But first, let me tell you how to get a hold of the program. If you'd like, 443-836-0171, 443-836-0171. Doing pretty good with a painful tooth, am I not? Uh, that's the phone number to get a hold of us. Join us at Facebook. Just log into Facebook and look up Tech Talk Live. You can post there as well or check out. That's where we keep our news feed and lots of tech news, keeping you up to date on uh, things that go bump on the Internet. Uh, drop us an email at techtalk at qibradionetwork.com. And by the way, qibradionetwork.com, that's the home base of this and other shows here on the QTalk Network. So that's how you get a hold of us. Oh, by the way, I guess on, on the website also, I, I, it, I'm, it's not, I'm not used to it, Ron, so I keep forgetting to mention it. On the website, mm-hmm. you can also, there's the, uh, the shout box, which is where you can post a chat message, and then, you know, we'll get the message there as well. It might get more widely used if we publicized it more, but, you know, it's one of those, one of those things, you know, like when we changed up the phone number. It, you know, I had to stare at the phone number for the first four or five shows, you know, to make sure we gave out the phone number correctly. Right. You know? Yeah, it's it, got to become habit. It's all an experiment in futility, isn't it? <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> so our show will take an unusual course. And so later on in the second half of the show, of course, we'll get to Mr. Ron's desktop with, actually, I believe we have backlogged two scam alerts from uh, Mr. Ron's desktop scam bureau. A bureau. Yes. I don't know. Okay. Got a badge, Ron. Yeah. All right. Ron's Bureau of Scams. Uh, So we'll get to that and uh, some other tech news and stuff that you may be interested in. But first, uh, (laughs) please help me welcome our guest tonight. Uh, 30 years in the technology solutions business uh, and the founder of uh, Heratrack, which is a wearable device for people with dementia. And also, most recently, an app called Swaha. And he's here to tell you about that really awesome app. Please welcome Patrick Talley. Patrick, good evening, and thanks for joining us on the program for a little bit tonight. Thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. It's always nice mm-hmm. to get a chance to talk about some of the things we're doing and how we're helping folks. So thanks a lot. 
Well, the pleasure is all ours. You, uh, you are doing a lot of interesting things. Um, okay. And so I want to go to, um, I want to talk to you not only about Swaha, but, you know, the Heritrack and some of the other things yeah. that, that, that you're doing because, you know, there, there's some real practical solutions in, in, in a sea of apps that do almost everything and anything. And uh, it's not all the time that you run into, you know, an app that is cool and helpful. And so let's talk about Swaha first. Am I pronouncing sure. it right? Sure. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. Okay. Um, well, uh, so the, the back story on Swaha is that uh, I, I didn't intend to make Swaha. Um, I, I'm, as you said earlier, I'm a long-term, uh, 30 year plus technology sales and marketing guy. And a friend of mine's dad or mother had died. And, uh, he posted on Facebook, does anyone know how to, how to, uh, strip out a voicemail? Uh, my mom has passed away and I, I want to save a message she left me. And, and I read this one day, it must have been a Saturday in my den. And I thought, man, this is, this is really sad that you know jay lost his mom and it's really sad that we're all still hanging on the scraps i mean we've got this these great technology tools in our pockets and purses but nobody's recording their, their life stories their legacy stories and, and we and you know i think everybody's got a story to tell I, i've always said everyone you know if they get out of bed in the morning they're a hero from getting you know getting over and getting through all the things that life has thrown at them and so i, I created an app to help people tell their life stories and it was called stories etc it still is called stories etc and it's out there and it did well and it's still doing well and it's just basically a hundred canned questions that start with your grandparents and, and parents go through early childhood high school years job experience love dreams hopes ambitions all the you know, biggest failures and you just answer the questions in, in audio video text with photos and, and we're, we're compiling for you an e-memoir well, and, and so that's that's done well, um, but there's one feature in Stories Etc. That, that we created that that people outside of the longer you know storytelling uh, uh, use were, were 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 enjoying, and and that is this this notion of going to your camera roll and grabbing a photo or, or up to twenty photos, and then. Uh, kind of talking over those photos as you swipe to the next one and the next one and the next one and go backwards, just like you do when you tell a story about, you know, hey, I went to, uh, you know, I'm going climbing this weekend in, in, in Colorado, and I'll take some photos, and I'll, I'll show people those, those photos, and I'll swipe forwards and backwards, and I'll talk about those photos. Well, uh, the, the technology or the, the functionality within stories allowed for that, and, and so everybody loved it, so we said, what the heck, let's carve it out, and we created Swaha. And all Swaha is, it's very, 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 very simple. You just instantly create a narrated slideshow from your camera roll. Right. And then you share it, right? You can push it out to, to any, you know, whatever, five or seven share buttons. And when a new social app picks up and, 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 and has a lot of momentum, we'll add a button to, to share to that crazy thing. But you can, you know, you can email and, and <laughs> Facebook and Twitter, Twitter and WhatsApp and, you know, Instagram and several others. But the whole idea is just to get people another way to collect their stories. And what we found is that people are using Swaha for fun, right? Just, hey, I went I went to a party last weekend. Here's some crazy pictures. And they tell that story. Right. And they push it to a friend or they post it on Instagram or Facebook. But we're also finding... And people are so creative, right? I mean, I, I, I put this thing out, but people are doing some amazing things. One of the cool things I've seen is a lot of realtors are using Swaha to do an instant uh, uh, property tour. The minute they walk onto a new property, they just snap pictures with their, their mobile phone. And then as they're walking back out to the car, they kind of narrate through those pictures and they push it out to their perspe prospective customers instead right. of waiting three days for those photos to get taken and and all posted on the website. Well, I'll tell you. So that's I, pretty cool. Yeah. I, I'm working on something creative for my first one. I haven't posted a first one a first one yet. It is a very neat app. I've been, I've been playing with it to see what it does, and it's interesting that you mentioned how people be creative. I have a creative idea going on. Full disclosure, my first Swaha will be about my dog. 
uh, who, who my my dog has her own Facebook and her own blog and her own website, and she's the uh-huh. internet's most famous schnauzer. But uh, one of the things I want to mention is uh, going back to your story about your friend Jay. Yeah. And because when you reached out to us and you, you sent a very informative, uh, you know, a, a very long, very informative message about you about what you do, and here's the app that I want to talk to you about. And as I was reading this. You know, when you read things, something jumps out and grabs you. And what really grabbed me was Jay's story because, and here's the relation to it. When my dad died a couple of years ago, uh, it was months before we actually cut off the phone service at his house because, you know, my, you know we had one of my siblings was staying there managing the, the property in the house. So when it was time to go, okay, well, we don't need this $30-some-dollar phone bill. You know, no one's calling the house anymore, you know. Uh, we went to cut it off. But it had that, you know, the Verizon voicemail system with my dad's voice on it, and all the siblings wanted to know if there was a way we can get it. Well, you know, I'm a 23-year veteran in the music DJ business, you know, full studio here at the radio station, so I'm like, yeah, I think I got some equipment that we might be able to do something with. So, uh, you know, my producer, Tony, and I, we kind of dialed into the phone system through the board and grabbed his last voicemail outgoing message and made an MP3 and, you know, delivered it to all the uh, siblings so they had that. But that's the thing that, like, that was like the hook that reeled me into the story of Swaha, was just yeah. connecting with your friend Jay and his story, and 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 the fact that you know that that's a, that's a real life story. People want those kinds of memories, and you know, fifteen twenty years ago, we had no way of doing this stuff. No, we didn't. And and you know, one of the things that, so my mom's getting older; she's eighty five, and and she's she's doing she does great. She's she's amazing, um, and. In the end of the day, she gets kind of tired and, and her memory fails a little bit. Um, but oftentimes, when I when I go over to her home, which is every Sunday, I stop by and we have brunch, and I'll get a, cu- a cup of coffee and I'll grab the old black and white photo album from literally in the 1900s all the way mm-hmm. up to probably the, the 80s um, or 90s, I guess, and uh, and I'll snap with my phone pictures of the photos from the photo album and then she'll tell a swaha story on all these old people because when mom dies we're nobody's going to know the stories of these people i don't wow. even you know we we don't even know who they are other than it may be a name scratched in the book underneath and so we're getting you know full backlog stories about her great grandparents and, and that's you know it's just a beautiful thing and you know my kids are young they're 22 and 24 but they still dig that they think that's kind of cool to hear some of those stories and see some of those those people, you know, with those big bushy beards and nobody smiles in the photos and such. <laughs> right, yeah. And what a great, another great use of the app. Yeah. Um, but I, I do want to talk about uh, the bracelet because then we're going from this is neat and helpful and creative to something that is extremely uh, important. But first, um, you know, I want to just let the listeners know, you know, if they want to get their hands on Swaha, you can get it from the App Store. Uh, you can also go to Swaha, that's S-W-A-H-A dot social, uh, and uh, that'll you know give you um, a how-to video on how to use it, which is extremely simple to use. I hate to say this, but a caveman can do it. It's so easy. And, yeah, I can uh, figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, a contact button and a link to the App Store to get it. And I got it, and, and I really can't wait to finish my first piece. And it's taking me a little longer That's because cool. of time. And like I say, it's going to be very creative about my dog. And That's cool. Now, know. I tell you, and you know, one of the things that a lot of people don't know, uh, uh, when, you, when you download the app, that video that's on the website is also on the app. So there's a two-minute video that walks you through it. But if anybody's ever, you know, used Instagram or used, you know, just you know, shown people their photos on their camera roll, they can do it. Uh, right now, but yeah, it's uh, it's kind of moved us into a whole nother whole nother kettle of fish, and, and actually going from from helping people share their stories to actually saving some lives. Now, is it on uh, Android as well? Not yet, not okay. yet, but will be. Not yet. Yes, yeah. Okay, all right. So right now, it is available for Apple. Yep. With Android uh, coming soon. Coming up. Okay. You bet. Uh, Patrick, uh, you, your other thing, probably more so important, that you have uh, uh, developed uh, a Heritrack, um, you know, a Fitbit size wearable bracelet, uh, which allows monitoring and tracking of uh, things like dementia and autism. And, and uh, I want to be able to fit that in before our, uh, with our break. So 
Tell, tell us about that app. Yeah, so I, my, uh, my two storytelling apps, Stories Etc. and Swaha, got picked up by some gerontologists out in California. And they were using the apps in a way that other people weren't. They were using them kind of in groups and instead of individually. And I, I reached out to him through the helpline because we could see the, the, that they were they were getting stuck in a couple of places because no the, the apps weren't made for groups. So mm-hmm. I sent him a note and said, "Who are you? What are you doing? How can I help you?" And they they sent back that they told me that they were gerontologists helping people with memory loss, people that have Alzheimer's and dementia, uh, and using the tools as a therapy device. My my my, my apps. And I said, oh, my gosh, you know, because of my family background, this is really personal. I'm all in. I'll help you folks however I can. Let me know what I can do. Right. That put me standing at a podium at the American Society on Aging in Chicago last March. I didn't even know there was such a thing as American Society on Aging at the time. You know, there certainly should be, I thought, but I, I had no idea about all this that's going on. I was giving a talk on using tablets, apps, and technology to help people with dementia. At the end of that talk, I got rushed by a group out of Ohio called Kindle Corp. And they've got about 15 long-term care facilities and memory care facilities. And they said, you need to solve this problem for us. It's a big problem for us. And I said, yeah, yeah. And they told me about the problem. And I said, look, I'm sure somebody's already done that. And they said, they said you're not taking us seriously. We've had carte blanche for the past three years to buy every device on the market. And we own everything and nothing works. And I said, well, let's dig into this. And so the problem is that people with cognitive challenges go on elopements, and that's the industry term for basically getting lost. Getting lost, right? right. So these, yeah, Amber Alerts, is, you know, we, we see these now. And it's, 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 it's a horrible problem. It's a horrible problem. People die a lot. I mean, frequently they do. And, and the devices that, that have been designed to solve this problem are old technology, and there, there are things like there's a tennis shoe, and that's great if you can convince them to wear the tennis shoe. My mom's not going to wear a tennis shoe, not to church. She's not going to wear a tennis shoe to sleep in. And so the tennis shoe was a great idea at the time, but it's just not, it's not, you know, it doesn't scale and it's not. So what have we done? It, it turned out that it wasn't a very simple problem because... You can't, you know, the, the Fitbit battery of 24, 48 hours isn't going to work with someone with, with Alzheimer's because you can't grab their wrist and, ch- and change out and, and recharge their watch or their, their bracelet every day. So mm-hmm. getting a battery that lasted more than 30 days and still had, you know, five-mile geofencing and tracking, monitoring, and waterproof, and it wasn't tied to a cell phone because if you tie it to a cell phone, these people will forget their cell phone, so that's a non-starter. Um, and, and a lightweight bracelet was hard. Right? You could make it big, battery works. You could make it light, and the battery's only a 24, 48-hour battery. So we, we have come up with some, some smart ideas on how to kind of trick the technology so that the battery lasts longer. So what we have in Heritrack, and this is really exciting and, frankly, very humbling for me because I am just a regular guy, but we're, we're putting out a Fitbit-sized bracelet that can track up to five miles. You can geofence. Basically, what I mean by that is with software, draw a, a circle or a rectangle or around the house or the homes or the neighborhood, and when someone wearing the bracelet goes outside of that geofenced area, a signal is then sent to an app, which may be the neighbor's, or it may be, you know, in my my family, it'll be my neighbors, my mom's neighbors, and my siblings and myself. And in a care facility, a care center, a memory care facility, they would put it around a memory care facility, and some of the mm-hmm. people working there would have the app on their phones. And there's, wow. you know, lots of other things we've done. Um, we've had a, just a uh, an amazing support from the what they call CCRCs, the long-term memory care retirement homes is what we used to call them. We've got some huge names that have stepped in to help us on the design. So the bracelet itself, there were lots of, of ideas as to why something like a Fitbit doesn't work. But if we could, if we could make some changes fit for people with, you know, with dementia, and Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's, and 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 autism and Down syndrome, there's specific uh, hygiene issues going on there. The, the the actual clasp had to be designed differently. 
because you can't make it too easy for people just to snap it off. Right. It had to be waterproof, right? Um, so lots and lots of these things, but we've had just help from really big companies. And what that's told us is that the consumers need it, because I know that and from my mom and and everyone I've talked to on the consumer side, and then these large uh, memory care facilities are, are lining up uh, to, you know, ready. So the cool part of this whole story is Last March, I was approached with this problem, and this coming March, and actually I, I made my reservations today, this coming March in Washington, D.C., is the 2016 National Conference of the American Society on Aging, and I'll be presenting with a COO from Kindle Corp on Heratrack, and we'll be actually taking orders then. And, and we're going to save some lives, and for, for just nice. a regular old guy, this is pretty humbling. Yeah, that's I mean, that's a really big deal, which is why I want to make sure we save some time for that too, because that's the whole thing, saving lives. You know, we see those alerts yeah. about you know elderly's uh, elderly people, uh, you know, who you know, have some sort of cognitive problem missing uh, from their home, and how many times we see you know a day or two later we find out you know yeah we we some many have been found, but some are found you know. Um, uh, that they've died, whether it be from mysterious ways or, or just naturally because of the situation they're in. And I, and I firmly believe that this product that you're talking about is going to save people's lives who have that problem. And, yeah. uh, and, and, and the, I, I thought it was important that we talked staggering. about that. Yeah, I really appreciate the, you know, the opportunity to. The, the, the website is uh, www heratrack.com h-e-r-a track t-r-a-c-k dot com and uh and we're you know anybody that wants to send us a message about some other ideas that they've got or any, any way we could any, we're still anything that anybody can do to help us we're still looking for help trying to make the product better well, here, we've had people a, saying you know we want to put it on our kids now and that kind of thing so you know, <laughs> we've got some adaptations to make as well right uh, so here's well here's a here's a, here's a question that might yeah. help in development series down the road. I don't know. Uh, does the the bracelet have uh, any kind of medical tracking or medical responsibility uh, response abilities? Not yet. So the one thing the so the, the bracelet itself is very simple. It monitors location mm -hmm. and it monitors right. movement. So we'll we'll be able to tell how much people are moving around, and we'll be able to. Give a report basically at the end of a day, week, or month uh, that says, "Okay, Jane was less active this month, and she was le less active percentage-wise by this much in the mornings." And this right. is what the actual breakdown report looks like. So there's that that's in there. We will in 2016, towards the latter part of the year, uh, stick a uh, heart rate monitor in it. But right now, there's the the challenge with heart rate monitors is they eat batteries like nobody's business. So we oh yeah. We, we, We've got some ideas on how to trick it so that it's not constantly eating the battery. Um, but that'll happen towards it. And, and, you know, technology moves fast. All oh, of this does. stuff, yeah, you know, all of this stuff wasn't available. And it's just like my tech guys, right? So my tech guys looked at all the solutions that were out there, and they're making fun of them. One of them's a, an ankle bracelet. I mean, that's really, that's <laughs> that's kind of a dignity stripper, right? <laughs> um, but, these, you know, my tech guys are like, look how big this is. This looks like it's back to the future side, you know. And I'm like, hold right. on a second. These people, these people built cool stuff when they built it. Mm -hmm. And what we need to do is make sure that we're always leaning into the latest technology. And and Internet of Things is changing the tech side so much. With you know our, my refrigerator w w that, w that will signal send me to an app, you know send a message to an app telling me that it needs to be serviced. Right? That's yeah. We, we, you know we hear all these things and we kind of roll our eyes. You know even when Nest came out, you're like, yeah, okay, that's cool. That's good looking. But really, kind of so what? Yeah, it's cool. It's geeky. I like it. My friends will think I'm cool if I get one. But really, but you know, then you start stepping back saying, okay, we're going to be controlling everything in the house with these types of devices. Right. Well, so all the Internet of Things that I kind of laugh at because I think, oh, there's a tech guy who went a little too far. I, I, you know, I get to also realize somebody that's using that is figuring out how to extend battery life for Heratrack, right? And, and, and signal range and those types of things. So right. the tech. Tech always moves fast, and if we pay attention to it, you know, probably 2017, we'll probably have five different devices out that do different, you know, different purposes. There's lots of cool wearable conversations going on right now where you can measure 
uh, you know, uh, blood pressure and even diabetes type indications and such. And so, you know, I think right. those things are coming right now. All I really care about is getting this baby out the door and, and having people say, you know, we, we, we can, we can give mom dignity. She can stay in the house longer and that's what she wants. And that's made mm-hmm. for a, a, a better life for mom. Well, certainly is. Uh, it, it sounds like a great thing. We're going to keep watching the progress for it, We're, and I'll be watching on LinkedIn too uh, for updates and such. And we wish you the best on it. I mean, I, I, I hope it takes off like a bullet. Uh, I'm going to get my first Swaha up real soon, so you'll see that. I believe we're connected on that social network as well. And I appreciate your time talking about this stuff, and I appreciate you, you making these apps and these devices. Yeah. I do. I really do. Yeah. Thank you for that. I want to say two things real quickly. First of all, the first Swaha story, by the way, ever. Mm-hmm. It's about a dog. <laughs> it's about my big, my big-headed yellow lab dog. I got a big, big-headed yellow lab, and awesome. And the first, first Waha story is about her. You can see a picture of her on the website now. I, I, someone asked me one time doing one of these interviews, you know, "Do you have anything else to say?" And, and it just hit me, and I want, I want to wind up with the same statement to you guys because you got a lot of listeners and people. You know, when I hear these things, when I'm driving in my car or, I, or I, I'm on the web and I hear them, I think, oh, that guy out there is doing something really amazing. That guy must be something special. I am I am not. I am just a regular guy. I mean, I took my garbage cans out this morning. I am a regular, regular guy. Uh, I was plunging a toilet at my mom's house last weekend. I am a regular Joe. Right. I, I just realized there was a need. And that the te- and there was something available that could satisfy that, that need, and then I've been working my butt off to make that happen. And so my challenge to everybody out there listening is, don't put out there that that guy's somebody special and doing something that you can't do. You can do something, and just go do something, man. Make a difference while we're here. We're going to be dead someday. Let's let's make a difference. That's my wow. message. Yeah, and a great message it is, Patrick. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. A you lot, guys keep man. it up, man. Best of luck, sir. And we'll look forward to hearing from you again and watching progress. Thanks a ton. I appreciate the opportunity. Y'all have, y'all have fun. You're welcome. Have a great night. Oh, Patrick Talley, everybody. By the way, go Astros. Yes. Go Astros if they meet, if they meet the Cubbies. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> Take care, Patrick. Yeah, <laughs> Patrick Talley, everybody. Heritrack.com and also Swaha.social. We're going to take a break. We'll come back with more Tech Talk Live after this message. Don't go anywhere. Tech Talk will return after this short break. So I use my computer every day. Not even sure how I get along without it. But I wasn't prepared for a virus. A Trojan, they called it. One night I'm cruising along, and the next night I can't do anything. I was afraid it was going to cost me a fortune. Boy, was I surprised. They had me back up and running the same day I called them. I really like PC Tech Rescue. And you know what? My wallet likes them too. Are you troubled by computer problems? PC Tech Rescue should be your very next call. Whether the problem is viruses, hardware, software, or any other issue, they can diagnose your problem and have you back up and running fast. With more than 25 years of industry experience, you can be sure you are getting dependable and affordable service. Call today, 484-429-6061. Or email us at PCTechRescue at gmail.com. Hi, professional skateboarder Tony Hawk here with Bugs Money and Daffy Duck to remind you to get moving every day. Because when you get moving an hour a day, you'll have the energy to skate through anything. <laughs> nice play on white, Doc. That's how I roll, Bugs. So whether you like to work the half pipe, now that's catching air, kick the soccer ball around, or dance in your room. Just move it your way. For an hour a day. The way you like to move, as long as you're moving. Carve out some time every day and get active. Because it's time to do a 180 on what you think exercise is. Because it can be whatever you want it to be. So be a player. Be a player. Get up and play an hour a day, Doc. Check out how to be a player at letsmove.gov. Head online to get tips on great ways to get moving every day. At www.letsmove.gov. Let's hear that one more time, Doc. That's www.letsmove.gov. 
A message from the Ad Council and HHS. Steven. Who said that? Me, down here. Ugh, what are you, a yellow booger? I'm a banana slug, Steven. What are you doing in my room? I'm your sense of adventure. It's been a long time since we've had an adventure in the forest. Mom took me to the forest last year. I'm a slug, Steven. It took me a long time to get here. You're right. I should get out. Yeah, the forest is not that far away. Hey, Mom! Come to the forest where the more adventurous you lives. Check out discovertheforest.org for cool places nearby. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. Hey, Grandma, turn up your hearing aid. It's fun, frolic, and mayhem. <laughs> it's the Behind the Mic Show with Joe Mahalik. Be there as he tries to answer some of life's most difficult questions. If you could be any kind of food, what would it be? Well, th- that's a little too weird. That's Sunday night, 8 p.m., right here on the Behind the Mic Radio Network. Assembly not required. Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. It's Tech Talk Live. I'm Joel Mahalik here with Ron, Mr. Ron, 443-836-0171, Tech Talk at QIBRadioNetwork.com. QIBRadioNetwork.com being the place to be, the address on the web. And you can also find us at Facebook. Just look up Tech Talk Live. Live, live, live. So, if you're just joining us, you'll have to check out the podcast on QIBRadioNetwork.com later on tonight to listen to our interview with Patrick Talley regarding the Swaha app, as well as Heratrek. Yes. So, there you have it. Ronnie was an Astros fan. What do you think? (laughs) Hey. They've been through a lot lately, too, so, you know. Yeah. So I can, I can totally relate. <laughs> and. 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 How about them Phillies? How about them? <laughs> what about them? <laughs> and the Orioles. Yes. Well, I'm just trying to cover everybody's team, now, You know, I'm trying to be like the, the Democratic Party, either. very inclusive. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. So uh, we turn actually to Mr. Ron's desktop at the at this time. Oh, and what a mess it is! Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of papers on this desktop. <laughs> And that brings us to uh, uh, the scam alert of the week, and possibly two. Uh, see how we go here. But you know, the first one that we want to talk about is a phishing scam that lures people with a free iPhone offer. Now, I've been seeing this all over Facebook as well. Uh, it, it's just, you know, again, as we always say, it just amazes me. The creativity. I, I hate to say it like that, Ron. I hate to say it, but the creativity. Behind these criminal minds. Mm-hmm. It's um, scary. Yeah. So, uh, so this is what the scam does. You'll receive an email or spot a social media post, Facebook, claiming that Apple is looking for people to test its upcoming iPhone 7. You've been randomly selected to try out the new device. To sign up as a tester, all you need to do is complete this short survey. Then, as you, as a thank you for your participation, Apple will send you a free iPhone 6. <laughs> so you click on the website, and the survey seems official. It's got your basic questions. It wants to know, do you currently own any Apple products? But when you get to the end of the survey, it prompts you to enter your credit card information. And it claims that Apple just needs to charge you shipping costs for the free iPhone 6. So, you, anyone can guess where this is going from here, really. Mm. Uh, there is no free iPhone. Apple is not giving away free iPhones. Okay? Um, 
And sharing your credit card number and any personal information uh, is just bad news. Mm-hmm. It opens up the door for identity theft, fraudulent charges. Soon there'll be heresy in the streets. <laughs> so how do you f- spot a fake survey claim? All right, first of all, look up the website on who is. Okay, you can copy the link address. Okay, and then you go to the whois.net directory and post it in there, and that'll tell you if it's brand new. It'll tell you who the ownership is. It'll tell you if it's masked by a proxy service. Okay, watch out for lookalike URLs. We've been talking about this forever. Almost every single scam we talk about says, "Does it look like something you're used to seeing?" Because that's one of the that's like the makeover part. All right, scammers will pick URLs that look similar to those legitimate sites. And so be very careful of sites that have the brand name as a subdomain of another URL. Be, so in other words, be very wary if you see I'm gonna screw you.com. It's probably not Tech Talk Live. Probably not. Right. Uh, legitimate businesses are not going to ask for credit card numbers or banking information on a customer survey. Period. And watch out for a reward that's too good to be true. We've talked about that before, too. Another warning sign, like many other scams. you got to watch for that. You know, nothing's given to you. Unless you're Bernie Sanders and he's going to give everything to you and charge someone else. But that's another show. That's a topic for somewhere other than here. <laughs> so Maybe Sunday? Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. Uh, so, that's, um, so that's the phishing scam that lures you into the uh, false reality of getting a free iPhone. Okay, so the other one, because there are, like you said, lots of papers on your desk. The other one we want to talk about is a job scam that fools applicants with online interviews. So if you see an online job posting, maybe you receive an email about a position from a recruiter. I get these all the time in my spam box. What does that tell you? Uh, You search online for the company name. It's a real business with a website, so you email the resume to that hiring manager. Did we talk about this last time? I don't know. I wasn't here familiar. last time. Some of them are very familiar because it's like a different scam, but the same tactic. So, ooh! This but if you want to skip it, go ahead. Yeah, it sounds really familiar. I thought I had two. I just had one. That's all right. But I do, we do appreciate that, you know. Yeah. You work so very hard at getting that stuff. Threat has been detected. Uh oh. Yeah, yeah. Did you click on one of those phishing scam links? No. <laughs> I clicked on the button that said producer. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Um. No, actually, there's another website there we should warn people about too, and that's called instantcheckmate.com. It's one of those. Uh, Public information, uh, public records, database Never sites. Heard of it. Um, supposedly, yeah, it's one of the new, it's one of the new players in the field. It allows you to go ahead and get uh, all kinds of public records from uh, uh, criminal records to uh, just about everything. You, you, you can Google yourself up there, and it'll, and they say, but. You can't expect us to give you this information for free. So you can start out for the low best rate of like $10.41 per month for unlimited searches now. So they start out telling you that it's for free. And then at the very end, they ask you for your credit card or PayPal information. Did so, you get scammed? No. So watch oh, out for that one person. too. So watch out for that one too. You know, it's almost like, like, you know, when I envisioned us doing this show, I envisioned us having a really good time every week talking about all this fun tech stuff, and we wind up just really talking about all the trouble <laughs> waiting for you out there on the other side of the computer monitor. 
What a vicious world. What a vicious cyber world. You know, always having to you know worry about attacks and you know, I read a very brief. Didn't really get into the whole article today, but I briefly looked at the synopsis of an article about how now you know the United States and China and all these other countries are starting to wage cyber war against each other over the internet. And I just don't even know if I want to dive into that story and read any more about that. You know, it was like the headline was good enough for me to stop. What do you mean we're launching cyber war against other countries? <laughs> what? Ugh. <laughs> but that's what we wind up doing. We wind up talking more about, you know, the trouble that lurks out there. Yeah. And if you think about it, even when we give out maintenance tips on how to keep things clean and, and you know and, and we always end up we even steer those conversations into how to make sure you don't have spyware and malware and malicious code running rampant in your browsers and toolbars it's a never-ending vicious cycle yep spam and scam and uncle sam evil I mean, I wish I played more games. I'd come on here and, talk, and start talking about gaming. There you go. Just to get away from all this technical sadness. Yeah. But it was a good reprieve to have somebody talking about, you know, some good stuff, tech-wise, you know? So. Mm. I wish there was a technical cyber way to get rid of my toothache. Like hit a button and ooh, boom, numb your gums. Well, if you hook something up to you, <laughs> yeah, a couple of car batteries, <laughs> well, or a drug pump, you know, <laughs> just push that button. That's technology, you know. I saw this. Um saw this movie and why can I not think of the name of it? Project something. Um, I just saw it last week. How old is it? Uh, last year. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it had to do with time travel. I'm trying to do a quick search while I not tie up too much of the airwaves here. Project Almanac. That there was you go. <laughs> it's pretty interesting. It's about all these 12th graders. They were all geeks, and they find all this paperwork and everything. And one of their one of their fathers was a scientist or something, and was working on this stuff in the government. And they uh, look at all these schematics and everything, and they realize that it was everything you need to make a time machine. And then they made it, and I uh, started jumping to time, and of course, you know, the movie went through all the consequences of what happens, but, you know, it brings up a really, uh, a, a real um, thought process that you can't escape about technology. Can we really, can we really time travel? Yeah, you know, can you really bend time and space to do that? You know, and another possibility, uh, another movie, recent movie I saw, great movie, Interstellar, talks about the same thing. Going through a black hole, bending that, you know, that paper over in half, you know, changing time and space. But Project Almanac was, was a neat concept about not only can it be done, doing it, and then the consequences of such actions of doing it, you know. And, um, you know, unfortunately, it didn't get a lot of, it didn't get any, any really good ratings, but, you know, I thought it was a really good movie. And, uh, sometimes I, I, I read these reviews and I wonder, what is it that the reviewer is looking for? Right. You know? Uh, and, and I don't know. I mean, do you not want to be entertained? You know, sometimes I wonder if, in this day and age, if, uh, we're looking for too much out of something like a movie. 
instead of just sitting back and watching a story. I mean, I've seen movies that are absolutely absolutely terrible, but they're terrible for the reasons of, oh, that's really poor acting. Oh, this music, and you know, it doesn't even fit. It sucks. You know, cinematography is bad. It's weak. But, I mean, I don't know. It, 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 yeah, it, like Rotten Tomatoes didn't even give it two stars. And it's a really good movie. But anyway, but, I mean, Ron, what do you think? Time travel. Can we go back? Can we go forward? I don't know. It's interesting to think about. We did Let's... this segment on the show, on the other show. I want to say about two years ago, maybe even more. Tony might remember, we talked about this John Titer guy. Titer, Titor, I don't remember, but he was apparently from the future. You know, this guy shows up on message boards back in, I think, 2002. And he's predicting all this mm-hmm. stuff about 2015, 2016, 2014. He's here for a few weeks. And he's telling people on the message boards, very convincingly, that he came from the future and he come back for a particular IBM computer. He was going back to the 70s to get this model. I figure which one it is. Uh, this is just method for some geeky, fun, techie, techie conversation anyway. But he was going back to the 70s to get it, but stopped off in whatever year this happened, 2012, 2011, whatever. Because he felt compelled, since he was slingshotting back in time and had to go forward, to stop here and warn us of what was going on. I mean, you know, in his time, they were living in trees in Florida, tree houses. You know, society had changed so much. People were loving each other again. All this stuff. Very compelling arguments. He had pictures. He had diagrams um, of his time machine. And, and, you know, just very weird. So so we get our hands on this uh, movie that was supposed to be actual footage of these people investigating this whole thing. And it really was... A very poorly shot movie. So, because I have some sort of nerdy belief in the concept of time travel, I dismiss the movie as uh, junk that wasn't real, but the possibility that the story was. Now, of course, I don't think, um, I don't want to say nothing came true from his predictions. John Titor's predictions, because I think some of the stuff was very general uh, and sort of Nostradamus. You know, you say it one way, and it will be, um, it could be true. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, but <laughs> I stumbled <laughs> upon that on the internet once, and that's why I brought it up on the other show and made a segment out of it, and I probably should stumble upon it again and see, you know, yeah. what's going on now. But uh, Were you around when we did that, Ron? Was that pre-Ron? No, you revisited it, though. Not the whole segment. Yeah, Ron was not here when we first did it. That was back in, I want to say, like 2008, maybe 2009. That far back? Yeah. Yeah. But we devoted a half hour to it not too long ago. A whole half hour, wow. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That last well, I think paragraph we... is pretty interesting, Joe. We answered your question about can we do it with Einstein's uh, theory of special relativity. I'm sorry, what was that? What last paragraph? What? Of uh, Einstein had a theory of special relativity. Okay. And I just sent it to you in the production chat when the last oh. paragraph is uh, pretty interesting. The last paragraph, say you were 15 years old when you left Earth in a spacecraft traveling at about 99.5% of the speed of light, which is much faster than we can achieve now, and celebrated only five birthdays during your space voyage. When you get home at the age of 20, you would find that all your classmates were 65 years old, retired, well, not retired, and enjoying their grandchildren, well, not enjoying, 
Because time passed more slowly for you. You will have experienced only five years of life while your classmates have experienced a full 50 years. Interesting. Space your relativity ideas of space are very hard to imagine because they're on experience every day. Life, but scientists have confirmed them. Theory says that space and time are really aspects of the same thing. Space, time. There's a speed limit of 300,000 kilometers per second or 186 miles per second. For anything that travels through space, time, and light always travels the speed limit through empty space. Hmm. Very interesting. So in theory, if you can find a vessel that can travel faster than that, then you should in theory, be able to just like breaking the sound barrier, you should be able to, uh, you know, uh, be able to shorten your, you know, that those are how you do the warp, you know, the warp time in uh, shows like Star Trek and things like that, where they can <laughs> go across galaxies. Right, and that was touched on in. Uh, interstellar they touched on that whole you know when they went through you know a black hole and basically you know they landed on say this one planet checking on something I don't want to give the story away if you didn't see it but they were checking on something they landed on this one planet and they were there for like about two hours and 14 minutes and when they got back to the off the planet back to the spacecraft like 26 years or 27 years had passed just above the planet. It's just really crazy stuff. But a fantastic movie. So, time travel. One of my favorite subjects of science fiction. Or science fact. We'll never know. And for another good book that explores time travel. It is a Stephen King novel, believe it or not. And I believe it's called... November 22nd? Um, let me see. I'll give you the right information because that's what we do here. Stephen King. Uh, books, right? Let's see what we got here. It is called 112263. And I'll leave that there. You can find out for yourself uh, what the deal is with that. But it's a really, really good novel. And it's very un Stephen King. Very on Stephen King, but they've been talking about time travel it goes all the way back to the 2001: A Space Odyssey and the 2010: The Year We Made Contact. Right, and movies. 2001 being made in 1968, by the way. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I actually saw that in the movie theater. Well, you can go back further than that to the H.G. Well, H.G. Wells story, The Time Machine. Yes. Written in the late 1800s. So, stick that in your comments, future loose leaf. There you go. But yeah, it's it is such an old story to be told, subject matter that is. But I often wonder. I often wonder if some miners had to do it. You know, and if we could, the absolute moral question is what would you do with that? I think the crazy thing about the 2001 movie was the intermission they put in the middle of the movie. <laughs> so you could get by popcorn and that kind of about halfway through the movie they had about a five minute intermission in the dead smack middle of the movie. Well, they did that in The Godfather too. Yeah. Did you time warp through time travel during that intermission? No, I just used the fast forward button. Yeah, that is uh, interesting uh, um, how they did that in some of those older movies. They left the theatrical intermission on the VHS. Give you time to get up and go potty and go to the kitchen and get a snack. You know? You make a nice chicken parmesan sandwich and say, chicken parm, you taste so good. Oh. 
By the way, worst commercial out there ever. Yes. Especially who's doing it very yeah. well. Yes. Yeah, because he doesn't have enough money. It's time to say bye-bye. I hope he goes away soon. But anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can stop by the Facebook page, Tech Talk Live, and share your thoughts about time travel. You know? I'm geeky like that, man. I love reading time travel stuff. Fiction, possible fact, conspiracy theories about it, I don't know. It's a very interesting subject. It's intriguing. It's hard to put that subject matter down. Speaking of time travel, I heard that Stan might be back on the show on Sunday. I heard that, too. <laughs> if we're lucky, I'll be on the show on Sunday. That's for all of us. Yeah, for all of us. Yes. You know, so many things going on in this cycle we call life. Indeed. Yeah. Scary stuff, indeed. Let's all go travel faster through time and get it over with. Can we do that? Can we, like, go forward, get everything straightened out that we need to get straightened out and fix, and then come back and then just have nothing to do but relax and do shows all night, every night? <laughs> oh, boy. Can, can you imagine that? Welcome back yeah. to Hour 10 of Behind the Mic. <laughs> Crazy. I... I think Stan would probably overeat then, but it's another story another day. <laughs> well, you have a lot of room to talk. You keep the same eating hours as he does. No, I <laughs> eat before and after. No, just kidding. That didn't sound any better. <laughs> well, I snack there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, the uh, scams uh, that we present to you, by the way, brought to you by Better Business Bureau. And you can check out more information on the scams and all kinds of scam information and where you can go to report such things at the website at bbb.org forward slash scam. And uh, a special thanks to uh, our guest tonight, Patrick Talley. Uh, head over to his website, heratrack, H-E-R-A-T-R-A-C-K dot com, about the uh, the bracelet that does geofencing and location tracking. And if you have an iPhone, go get Swaha. It's Swaha dot social or at the App Store. That's W-A-H-A. And do something with it. It's some pretty cool stuff. And thanks to Ron for Mr. Ron's desktop with the scam alerts. You're welcome. We so do appreciate that. Uh, I want to remind everybody they can get the podcast available at our website at qybradionetwork.com. That's the address on the web. You can email us at techtalk at qybradionetwork.com and share with us or ask us a question. We'll get it out on the air and get you an answer. So, uh, and of course, last but not least, I want to thank Tony Richards, our producer and friend on the other side of the glass, for putting this whole thing together so you at home can listen. So please join us next week for Tech Talk Live on Wednesday night, 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 on the Pacific Coast. Happy computing, folks. Have a great week. Good night. Interfacing with Tech Talk, a weekly presentation of the QYB Radio Network. To contact the show, send us email at techtalk at qybradionetwork.com. See you next week.